Today we start off with a new Jet coach, Adam Gase. Mm. And, you know, when he got let go by the Dolphins, I, one of us on the show said, watch, the Jets will hire him in, in a totally <laughs> frivolous way and sarcastic way. And you know what? They hired him. A guy with an under 500 record who got fired by a team in the division, and you had to have him. Now, for all reports, if you believe what's being said and tweeted and written, he was the second choice behind Ja Rule. Ja Rule wanted to his own assistance. No, it's not, it's not Ja Rule. No? Matt Rule. Matt Rule, I'm sorry. But I love the Ja Rule reference by you. So, it goes to Adam Gase, 40 years old. Supposedly a quarterback whisperer, um, had great success with Peyton Manning uh, in uh, you know one of the years in, in Denver. Peyton Manning, 5,500 yards and 55 touchdowns, not too many interceptions. But you, you really have to wonder, well, how much did he have to do with it? Peyton Manning well, was great and Hall of Fame bound while he was in Indianapolis. Well, who benefited from that? Gates. The Denver Broncos. Right. And Gase was available, and the Broncos needed a head coach. Never looked at him. And they didn't look at him. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, you can't take credit for anything Peyton Manning does late in his career. Peyton Manning came back strong after the injury, and then eventually it started to catch up with him, age and the neck injury, and wasn't nearly the same quarterback. I'm not going to try to devalue Gase, all right? Maybe he'll turn out to be a great hire. We'll see. But from the resume, what exactly do I get excited about? Under 500 coach, lost the only playoff game he's ever been in, all right? You say quarterback whisperer, but there isn't a lot of evidence that he did anything with Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, now, if you want to say Tannehill year, stinks. The first year, he was, you know, he, they, they made the plus. He was 10-6, and six, and Tannehill missed the second year, and Tannehill right. played 11 no, games this understood, year. understood, but it's still kind of open for debate exactly how much of a quarterback whisperer he is. He did a good, good job right. with John Fox and Cutler in, in Chicago. <laughs> Cutler had a pretty good year, cut down his interceptions, and we'll talk to John but, Fox know, later. It's one thing having a good year with a quarterback that had already been established, like a Peyton Manning, like a Jay Cutler. But what about a quarterback young in his second year and developing him into a great quarterback? The reason I'm kind of arguing about it, Michael, is because no one wanted to give Mike McCarthy any credit. All right? 13 years in the NFL, nine years to the playoffs. Oh, well, he had Aaron Rodgers. He didn't have anything to do with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers was great. But... We can ignore that, but, well, well, look what Gase did with Peyton Manning. Look what Gase did with Cutler. Look what Gase uh, did with Tannehill. And Tebow. And Tebow. So it, you're just being convenient. You, you want to you pay attention to what you want to pay attention to and ignore what you want to ignore. But the fact is, is if, you, if you want, if experience was important, McCarthy had more experience than Gase. So, but, so did uh, Caldwell. But, but if experience was important... Why was Rule your number one choice who had almost no experience, but you shied away from him because he wanted his own assistance? Which, by the way, I think coaches should be allowed to pick their own the, assistance. The, the, the gall of the Jets to say we have to pick the assistance for you. Right. Wow. So I, I'm not saying that it's a failure because I don't know. It could turn out to work. But, I, but my frustration level, if you're a Jet fan, is he wasn't your first selection. And if you love all the little things about Gase then what was it about McCarthy you didn't like? Because I think McCarthy has done more in the NFL than Gase has. What, because he's a little younger? What, because he came from your own division? He coached in the AFC as compared to McCarthy who coached in the NFC? I'm not really sure. We'll see how it ends up working out. But it sounds to me like Peyton Manning made a phone call to Chris Johnson, and Chris Johnson was floored by the endorsement. Yeah, if you're Chris Johnson and you haven't been in football that long, and all of a sudden you pick up the phone and Peyton Manning's on the other end... That could be a little bit of a sway, but Peyton Manning also made that call to Cleveland, and John Dorsey said, thanks, but no thanks. Didn't even yeah. consider Adam Gase. So all of a sudden, uh, Peyton Manning's so concerned about the Jets hiring his guy. Meanwhile, he had two chances to be a Jet and passed on both of them. Right. Because he could have left Tennessee early when the Jets had the first overall pick, said no. And then could have signed with them as a free agent in 2012 and said no. But are you ready? Is everyone geared up? For the stat that will excite you about right. Adam Gase. You ready? This is a big stat. Michael, you ready? Yeah. You sure? I think so. Here's the reason the Jets had to get Adam Gase. You're not going to believe us. Listening close to your radio. Everyone, roll up your windows. Tell everyone in the car to be quiet. Shh. Put out the blunt and lean forward for a second. Adam Gase, as a head coach, 5-1 and one 
against the New York Jets. Wow. Do you believe that? No. It's unbelievable. How could you beat the Jets five out of six times? How could you do that? And, and here's what's even better. He has this astounding record of five and one against the Jets. And there's only one team in the league you're guaranteed to no longer play. Only one. The New York Jets. <laughs> and they're touting this. Oh, he was five and one against the Jets. Well, if it was five and one against the Patriots, that alone is reason to sign a guy as your head coach. Five and one against a, a team, though, let's be honest, is lousy. That's why you needed a new head coach in the first place. And number two, you're never going to play again. Why do people keep saying this? It's a dumb, it's a dumb narrative. Five and one against the Jets. So I mean, uh, who you want me to go over a list of other people five and one against the Jets? Also, you were five and one against the Jets, and Todd Bowles was the head coach, and Todd Bowles got fired because he wasn't good enough. Well, so what are we talking about? It's a, it's a dumb narrative. Bill Belichick is two hundred and thirty three and six against the Jets. What does it matter? Uh, Joe Gibbs eighty eight and two against the Jets. But those would be good hires by the Jets. Fantastic. Yeah, they would. Uh, there's other things to consider that make you a little nervous about Gase. A little prickly with the media in Miami. How's it going to be in New York? Especially mostly has rabbit ears when it comes to what fans say. How's it going to be in New York? See, that's a good thing for us, though. I'd take prickly over flatline. We have audio of them. You want to hear it? Sure. No! No! Actually, no. Here, this was something that I used on ENN a while ago when he got annoyed. You guys will remember this. In mid-October, Gase got annoyed of people talking about Ryan Tannehill's injury. I don't know, I think there's some kind of like HIPAA law or some, something like that. They can't talk about I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't sit there and ask him all these questions, and I just know the guy couldn't go today. All right? Go ask him. I'm tired of answering this question about this guy. Uh, I got it, but you know what? I'm, t I'm over it. Me and him, we, we know that he's not right right now. Okay? The details of it, we'll keep that to us. You guys don't need to know that. Oh, good for you. Now, let's listen to Adam Schefter. Uh, Adam was on with um, Alan Hahn right when the news broke. Yeah, that's perfect. Said, Should friend. the Jets be concerned with issues in Miami? There have been a number of issues in Miami. It goes beyond the head coach. And I think what Adam showed there is sometimes he got very impatient with some of these players and wanted to move on from some of these guys when things didn't go his way. He's a, he's a tough, demanding guy. And there were certain guys that weren't doing things the way that he wanted done. And so we saw them ship out a number of players. I, I think that you know, they got talent. Uh, they got the most out of their talent. And, and the Jets believe that this guy will be a, a plus for this franchise. Otherwise, you don't make the move. Now, Cameron Wolf covers the... the uh the Dolphins. So obviously he has a great insight when it comes to um, uh, Adam Gase. And supposedly Gase did, did not have a great relationship with his players. So let's hear Wolf on that. Some of his outdoing in, in Miami was, you know, just being able to uh, have that cool relationship with players um, when things are going rough. And, you know, he would have some ruffled feathers with certain players if their personality didn't gel with what he uh, what, what he intended for his roster. So, you know, he, he wants a certain culture. Um, and if guys don't fit in that, he's uh, he's not he's not uh, afraid to jettison them, um, you know, no matter what side of the ball they're on. Now, this was on Hardesty's show yesterday. Wolf went on to say the players had mixed feelings about Gase. There were some players that really loved him, that raved about his genius, you know, Frank Gore, Albert Wilson, they all talked about how intelligent he was as a play caller, uh, how much they thought they could get out of that offense with him. But then there were other players who felt like maybe he chose favorites. If, if you weren't one of his guys, uh, then maybe you got a different accountability spectrum overall. So I think there was, there was multiple, multiple uh, viewpoints of Gase, and I think that, you know, he probably has to learn some lessons for him how he handles things from his Miami days. I'm not sure if, you know, he's already learned those or he will learn those um, in the running. But I think, you know, the fact that he had a lot of personnel control in Miami, the fact that he had pretty much, you know, uh, the, say, the, the wherewithal to do whatever he wants uh, was a little bit of a hindrance for him, and it prevented him from, you know, being being successful in Miami and then. Well, he's not going to have that. Well, see, see, that's the problem right? to me. You can't compliment him by saying it's his way or the highway. If he didn't like a player, he would jettison them. That's not going to work here because he's not going to have the power to do that. Mm -hmm. Because Mike McCagnan's going to have the power to let players go or not. So 
is he going to have the kind of relationship with McCagna where he can go to McCagna and say, listen, I'm having a problem with Robbie Anderson. He's not listening to me. He's showing up late for practice. I want to cut him. I want to make a statement to the rest of the team. And McCagna say, no, we're not cutting him. We're going to make him stay. That, that, then that takes his power away. Plus, the way the Jets structure is, I don't know if Gase can even go to McCagna and say that. Because the power structure, at least what we were told is, he would then call Johnson and say, I want to get rid of Robbie Anderson. And Johnson would talk to McCagnan. But he's not going to have that power. And also, <laughs> in terms of you know, the ability oh, no. to deal with the owner, he, you know, there are reports that he had a very contentious relationship toward the end with Stephen Ross, the billionaire owner of the, uh, of the Miami Dolphins. So now he's going to deal with a guy who's essentially been running the Jets mm -hmm. for about a year and a half, and Christopher Johnson. So uh, this, was not the, this was not the slam dunk hire. This was not the winning the press conference hire. This was not making your um, fan base feel good hire. Wow. Remember, I asked. Sounds great so far. I asked Ira from Staten Island, "Would your head explode?" I hired Gase. He said, "Yeah, I'd be very upset." So hopefully, it explodes on the air. That would be good for ratings. Well, they great. So uh, again, I don't want to knock it because I didn't interview them, and maybe they they see something that I don't. So good luck. I hope it works out. Mm -hmm. I'm just not really sure. What I see from what I'm allowed to see and what's exposed to us that really floats my boat about the hire. Maybe they saw something that I don't, I don't see. But all the positives that, you, that, that I hear people say about Gase, I'm not sure is going to apply here. Especially his ability to bring in players and jettison players that aren't his type of guys. Is he going to have the power to do that?